Welcome to Blind Owl Outdoors. I'm going to give you a, a quick little video on what I think are the most important knots that you're going to need being an outdoorsman, a boater, um, for your car, for your truck, for tying a handle on a bucket. I don't care what you're going to use it. These, these few little knots and for tying ropes together, this is, these are the knots you're going to need. Um, for me, the most important knot is the bowling knot. And when you're using a rope here, you're gonna, we're going to call this loose end here the tag end, and we're going to call the other part of the rope the standing end. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to make a loop. To make a loop, for almost all the different knots, you want a clockwise loop. So you've got two different ways. You can just twist it with your right hand, and it'll form a loop, a perfect loop every time. Or take a bend in the, in the rope and just twist it clockwise, like that. Okay? That's what you need. So I, I just usually, I usually just go like that. I always keep, I always keep the tag end to the right. No matter how I'm tying a rope, if I have to tie a rope with it on the other side, I walk around to the other side so that the tag end is always on the right. It's so much easier. So make a loop. Take your your tag end, go through the hole around the sanding end and back through the hole and grab both pieces together which is something you don't see very often and then just pull the standing end like that. Now that's a bowling knot. The, the tag should be on the inside. doesn't matter. The tag can be on the outside too. If you go around the rope the other way the tag goes on the outside but a proper bowling should be on the inside. Okay, now the beauty of a bowling knot is it, it never gets tight. It holds secure no matter what. If you jerk it like pulling a car or something it can't come undone. But even after pulling a heavy load, all you have to do is turn it over, and this is one of the knots that has a bar on it. Just push the bar down, and the whole thing just loosens right up. Just like that. Simple as can be. Tie it one more time. Make a loop. Whatever you're going to do, go around whatever you're going to do, or whatever you're going to tie. Go through the hole, around the standing end, and back through the hole. Then pull the standing in tight, and then you have a perfect bowling knot. Very, very simple. Um, you can make it a, even more secure if you want to make it a double bowling knot. I, I've never used, I never use them myself, but it's very easy to do. Is you just take a a loop again, take a second loop, put on top of it, then go through your hole. Oop, go through your hole, go around, back through your hole. Grab the two pieces again, pull the standing end down, and then you have to pull the loop to make it tight around there like that. Now you have a, a double, this is called a double bowling. And that's even more secure. Um, again, I've, I've never had, never had found a need to use that, but uh, some people like it. Maybe if I was going to use it to haul myself up over a cliff or something, I might, I might go for the double just to be extra secure. Um, another not that's that's kind of important. Let's say you, you say you need to let's say you need to put a loop in the center of your of your line. So to do that, I would use an alpine butterfly. And for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, have a little bit of tag end done here. I'm going to I'm just going to wrap it around my hand once like that. So now I have the two pieces here. I'm just going to tuck this, the short one behind there, and then I'm going to grab this loop here, and I'm just going to tuck that loop through the hole. And then just kind of pull it all tight, like that. And you pull that out straight. That's your alpine butterfly. And that's a very good way. Let's say you have a bad piece of, of rope in your line. You can put that bad piece of rope right here for your loop. And then the rest of your rope with that knot in there makes the knot, the rope strong again where you can use it. And to undo this one, it also has the bars. You just push a bar and then pull out the, the loop like that and it just comes undone very very simple one more time I'm gonna put a, a little, little bit of tag on this side here my left hand go around my hand one time take this side here tuck it behind grab the loop here pull it out just a little bit pull it back through the hole and then just pull it snug 
Now there's many different ways to tie the alpine butterfly. Um, the way I'm showing you is the easiest way. Um, you can tie it any way you want, but I would I would suggest learn how to tie the knots in a way that you can use them out in the field. Um, there's a lot of knots like the the zeppelin bend to tie two knots together. You'll see you'll see on, on on demonstrations they'll make a nine and then they'll make a six. Put the two things over, tuck them up and down, and it, it ties the knot just fine. But you're not going to have that opportunity out in the field to be laying your ropes down on the ground to be making sixes and nines and stuff like that. Um, to tie a uh, a bend, which is connecting two ropes together. My my favorite knot is the Zeppelin bend or the Carex bend. If I have some real big, real big diameter, like you know, three quarter inch to inch inch uh, nylon ropes or something like that, I will use the Carex bend. But for almost any other time, I would always use a Zeppelin bend. To, to tie a Zeppelin bend, it's very simple. All you're going to do is tie an underhand knot. So you're just going to go around like this, around like this, underneath. And then through. Okay? Very simple. You're going to kind of loosen that up a little bit, and they call that the clover. Okay? Then you're going to take your second rope and always have it coming from the right. You're going to follow this first rope through, go across itself here, and then come up through the this loop here you made and make sure you go inside this loop here just like that and you have your two tag ends here hold those together pull those two down and then pull them together like that that's a zeppelin bend um, this is the knot they used back in the old zeppelin ships to uh, hold them on the ground it's a knot you can tie in your hand uh, easy as can be and you can you can do this with if you have nice you have decent quality rope. You can tie this with inch inch diameter rope also. Okay, I'll show you that one more time. Again, another knot. Has a bars on it. Has a bar. So you just pull the bar and the bar on the other side and they, they just come undone. So to tie this, I'll, I'll do this one with the, the other color rope this time. So you're gonna make you're gonna make an underhand knot, just gonna go underneath here like that and go through. Okay. And then you're gonna loosen up a little bit so you have you got your short end over here. So you, I'm just going to call that the clover. And then you take this one from the right side, and you're going to follow this line in, follow it in, and you're going to make a loop, and you're going to go across your piece you just brought through. And then what's important is to go back up through this hole here. You're going to go through the bottom loop and your own loop, just like that. And then you have your two tags. Pull those together. Like that, and then pull it down tight, and that's the the zeppelin bend. It's a fantastic knot, very very strong, very very strong. It won't come undone if you're like say you're jerking a boat or something like that. You know, there's all other there's a lot of other kind of knots too, but some of the knots that when you put tension and take tension off of them, they'll come loose. So they're not very very secure. And the, the what makes a great knot is it's easy to tie. It holds fast no matter what, and it's easy to untie. That's what makes a good knot. So to undo that, you just same put the bars, push the bar, loosen it up, and it just just pops undone, no problem at all. That's the Zeppelin bend. Uh, another knot I really like. I like the Hunter's bend also, but I won't I won't show you that. You can go back and look at my videos. Another really nice knot is the Carex bend. Now you're going to use the Carex bend if, let's say, you can use it for any time also if you, if you like the way it ties. I like tying it because it's it's uh makes me feel like I'm really tying a knot. Uh, it has a little bit of style to it. This is an old sailor's knot. My grandpa was an old sailor back in the old uh, sailing freighters and stuff. So this is I kind of like this knot. So I'm going to have my 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 uh, tag end off to the right again like always and again I'm going to twist it to the right twist it down to make a loop Okay, that's what you need for almost every knot same thing I, I could fold it over into a bend and then twist it clockwise like that so it would always be the same so I, I just twist it to me makes a loop now you're going to 
take your, your rope you're going to tie together, you're going to run it right across that loop, just like that, right across the loop. You're going to go under this one, under this one, over the standing end, and then over, under, over, over, under, over, just like that. Oop. I screwed it up. Let me try it again. Make a so you can't time perfect your time. Make a loop. Run your line across that. Go under this one. Over this one. There you go. You go under, over, under. <laughs> My mistake. Under, over, under. Slide that through. And then what you wind up with is kind of a pretzel looking knot. And this is that's the Carrick's bin knot right there. Now what this is in the we call this the plat uh, plat mode, something like that, so it's flat. Um, this is also what you would use if you're gonna make a diamond knot on the end of a lanyard or something like that. Very very uh, uh, nice knot. So but what's very very most important about this knot is that your tag is under here and your other tag is under here. Your standing in is over and your other standing in is over. If you tie it a little wrong, this one will be under and this one will be over. It's still a good knot, but it's not near as strong. So then to tie the knot itself, you just take the two standing ends and pull them together and the knot will capsize into that right there. And that, that's another knot right there. I don't care how hard you jerk that, uh, jerk hard, let off, whatever, on a boat or pulling a car or whatever, that knot will not ever come undone until you want it to. Then, again, you use the bars, loosen the bar up, loosen the other bar up, and the knot will come right apart. Uh, it'll be, you know, if you pull, if you pull a car, it'll be, it'll come apart a little harder than that. But it's, but it's not that hard. All right, now let's try it one more time. Okay, my my tag into the right. I'm going to twist it to make a loop. I'm going to take my other rope up across that, just like that. Up across just like that, okay? It's going to go under this side here. It's going to go over that. And it's going to go under, over, and under. And you, you snug it up, you'll wind up with the the pretzel look. And what I suggest is you just try them a few times, get the hang of it. Um, this this is a knot right here. Again, you can tie this you can tie this down on the table too. It's much easier. But I would recommend practicing tying all these knots in your hands so you can tie them when you need them. And then all you know you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your two standing ends together and cap sizes, and you got it. Uh, one other one other knot that's pretty handy is uh, this. I used this in my project the other day. Is to make a stopper knot. I, I had to run a, a a line up through a a board, and I needed it so that it was staying there. So to make a stopper knot, again, you would just take a a loop. This is the stevedore knot, and then wrap around the standing in once, standing in twice and then just go back through your hole and snug it all together. Makes a real nice bulky knot. Now this is another knot right here that will not seize up. You can easily untie this, you know, no matter how hard you pull on it, it'll come right undone. Um, you know, those are my those are my favorite knots that I would use all the time. Uh, another thing, you might need to use, make a slip knot or something like that. Um, you know, you, you have your other knots that are very simple. You know, you have your your overhand knot like that. You know, that, again, that's going to tighten up, so you're not going to be able to untie it. A seizing knot. You have a figure eight knot. You can you can go around like that and come back through. You know, I, I, again, I don't ever use I don't ever use a figure hand a figure eight knot ever because they get they get tight and you can't get them apart. Um, to tie a slip knot, the very easiest way to tie a slip knot, again, is make a loop, fold that down on top of the line like that, pull the line through, and now you have a, a slip a slip knot. You know, so you can pull it down tight, whatever however, whatever you want to do. Okay. 
that's the beginning of the marlin spike knot also another way to tie the bolo knot you can just take your your rope give it a twist give it a second twist it'll fold down pull that loop up take your your tag end around whatever you're going to go through grab hold of this side of the loop like this and then just pull this side and it'll capsize over into a bowling knot that's another just a trick how to tie an easy knot uh, the marlin spike knots another very important knot maybe we'll do another video with with some other odd knots um, I use the marlin spike all the time when I'm trying to pull ropes uh, it's a nice way to make a ladder <laughs> got the turkey in the background the other side we got little puppies making noise <laughs> he gobbles at anything um, but I would just suggest that you learn four or five knots uh, the, the square knots another good one to know um, I use that all the time um, the, other, the other ones that are real important are the clove hitch and the constrictor knot those are both real important knots for tying things on to uh, pipes and sticks and branches and things like that. I use those all the time. It's good to know how to tie those uh, in your hand so you can slip them over the top of, of branches or bags, whatever you're going to tie up, or to be able to tie them right on the object itself. So I think we'll have to, have to make another video, I guess. But that's all I have for you now. Uh, thanks for taking the time and watching this. I'll have to watch this back and see if it's okay, but I, I think I think you should be able to see what I just did. Uh, you can see the table soaking wet. I'm pouring out sweat here. Um, please click like and subscribe. You can contact me anytime at blindowloutdoors at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and practice, practice, practice on your knots. They're very important. They could save your life or at least make it much easier.